Hello and welcome to VLAN, video lighting, audio, music, and photography how-to show. I'm, of course, your host, Matt Haslam, and today on the program, we're going to be talking about how to do accounting for your small business, because not every business can afford $50 a month to have a program like FreshBooks, which, yes, is an automatic program, but you can save a ton of money just doing it yourself in a program like Excel. And granted, if you do enough business, then it's definitely worth it to have a program like that to do everything automatically, and you can accept credit cards and all that kind of stuff all online and send invoices without really even being there to do much work, and you don't have to remind people all the time to pay. But if you're like me, and you're not at that point yet where you can definitely afford a huge expense like that, or even if you're at a point like me where, you know, it's you might be able to afford it, but you really want to just keep that money to yourself. It's hard-earned dollars that you make yourself, and you kind of just want to keep it to yourself and, uh, and, you know, take that home and get some groceries and stuff you actually need with it. Um, so if you're at that point and you want to just basically do things in-house, but you don't really know how to, this is a how-to guide of how to do that. So what I've done here is this is an Excel sheet. Now, this is not going to be available online anywhere for a download or something like that, but it's something that you can easily replicate. It's something that I made up in about two to three hours or so, um, and we're going to be getting into the contract side of this in another episode to come here of how to write an actual contract or an invoice for your small business. That's all on another episode upcoming here, um, but for this one, we're going to be talking about just how to bring all that information in from whatever invoices you're sending out, and that way you can keep all of your projects organized, and most importantly, know what your profit and loss is from your whole company. And uh, so this is basically the program that I actually use for my small business here. And so basically, I just have a simple Excel sheet with a bunch of little tiny tabs, as you're going to see. Um, they're called sheets down here on the very bottom of the screen. And there's the down here. Um, all at the bottom, there's a Q1 sales summary, Q1 expenses, Q2 sales summary, Q2 expenses, all for all four quarters. And then there is profit and loss. I also have some sheets of just regular cu customer information of trying to keep all my customers in line of, um, you know, knowing uh, you know, not only who they are, their contact name, their, um, what they normally buy from us every year. Um, we have information in there regarding, uh, sales tax in Pennsylvania here, whether their sales tax is exempt, whether we have that information on file and whether or not we have to ask them for their form this year or not, um, what year that form is expiring or whatever kind of stuff we need on every single customer. Um, how much we have invoiced out to them, how much they paid to us already this year, all that information is on another sheet that I uh, decided to hide for this uh, program because I don't want everyone in the world to know who my, all my clients are. But for this, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, I have the sales summary first here. It's basically your invoice number, whatever number you have. Um, for instance, this year we're going with 279001. Um, last year we had 278001 as our first contract of the year. Um, and that allows us to keep track of everything and know this number corresponds to this certain invoice. Um, every single invoice we send out is numbered. And that way it just makes sense for us in accounting here of knowing and being able to keep track of what's paid and all that kind of other stuff. And all of that will be, again, covered in the contract episode the invoice date, the date that we actually sent it out. So we're going to go with the first of the year this year, even though it's not the first of the year when I'm making this episode. Customer, I'm going to put my name just for uh, example sake here in the episode. I would normally put the actual customer organization name or whatever it is. Let's say a description of what they want. So um, let's say I had a commercial video that the customer wanted, I'm going to put that there. Or if uh, they bought an audio package or whatever they bought for me, I want to record it there. Quoted amount. Now, here's where we get into what 
number we actually quoted them including the sales tax if your state has sales tax um, so let's say including sales tax I had a thousand dollar contract which is a thousand dollars times 1.06 here in the United States for six percent sales tax it'd be a thousand and sixty dollars now that's just an example number again what actual pricing we have is not including in this video for obvious reasons uh, but that's the amount that we quoted to them and that's the amount that we're looking to get paid from them if that contract actually goes through now that's just the quoted amount that's how much we're saying we can do that job for and here's where we get into a little tiny bit of confusion because a lot of people seem to think in their accounting programs that they need to record what money they're actually bringing in which is definitely true, but they forget about the quoted amount. This is a, a part of your entire accounting summary that allows you to see, here's how many quotes I wrote this year, which basically next year allows you to determine, hey, if we wrote, let's say $100,000 in contracts, but we only ever got about 75,000 of those contracts, well, then you're gonna be able to determine how many quotes you give out, determined uh, for percentage wise how many you actually will get over a long period of time the more numbers you have the better your data can be and better your assumptions can be of um, just examples like here um, we know last year we did uh, a certain number of contracts and we know we only got about 80 percent of them and so we know basically going forward that, that might still be the same number. If that climbs in the uh, ratio, then we know we're doing a really good job and um, we know that our customers really like us. If that number starts to dwindle and we're doing a lot more contracts than we are actually getting, then we know we need to change something up a little bit. Um, so that's why I like this data to be here of the quoted amount. And then let's say the customer goes through with it and they're saying, you know, yeah, what? Well, yeah, we'll go for that price. Sure thing. So we actually put that in number in a second time. But where we put that in actually is determined by this next part. Let's say they went for it. So we're going to put $1,060 right there. Next up is our non-taxable sales and taxable sales. Now here's determined uh, by your state, definitely. But if your state has sales tax and it requires you to have sales tax, which for any video or photography or audio and lighting uh, services that you give or, or consulting services, you need to charge sales tax, at least here in the United States for Pennsylvania. Um, I don't know about other states, how exactly they determine it, uh, but for that kind of stuff, including merchandise, all that kind of stuff is taxable. A lot of small businesses seem to overlook that little part of sales tax, and you know then you're basically up, up Brown River. So it's not good for you. Um, that's if the uh, certain uh, Department of Revenues catch on to you, and they definitely will. I've seen it happen numerous times. So um, if a customer is tax exempt, which means I actually have their PA exemption tax form on file here, I'm gonna put that amount in here, but um, the number over here is including sales tax. So that means that the customer is not sales tax exempt. So I'm gonna put the number in over here, meaning that we definitely charge that. And right here, uh, I'm, I'm gonna put the original number in here, amount before sales tax. And so we know that, hey, the amount after sales tax is 1,060, and we know that the sales tax collected on that was $60. That way, at the end of the month or the quarter, I can report to PA Department of Revenue that I made a thousand dollars and I need to pay them sixty dollars. All that information is right here for me as I go through really quickly. This all makes it very easy and simple for you when it comes time to uh, reporting your income at the end of your month or quarter to the Department of Revenues or the IRS. All of this is very very easy for you at the end of the month or quarter. Now let's say um, also with all of that, the math behind all of this is simply the non-taxable sales right here, plus the amount of taxable sales right here, plus the sales tax collected equals this amount. So this is the amount after sales tax, which 
By the way, this is for a reason. We add up this line and this line and this line because if there's a non-taxable sale right here, um, sorry, that's a row that doesn't have it. But that way I know the amount of that we collected this month or quarter is $2,060 already. Um, I already know that information without going too much in depth of is it a taxable sale? Is it a non-taxable sale? I want to know how much we should have collected that quarter in total. And that number is right there. Next up, I want to say if my deposit is due at a certain date, I want to put that date in. Um, I want to say if it's an open invoice or if it's already paid, if that deposit is already paid, I'm going to put paid there. I want to say when that de the final amount on that is due, the other 50%, when is that actually due right there? paid or if it's open and then the final amount what date was that actually paid on I want to know for certain if I don't see a number or uh, sorry a date in this column I know that that customer still owes me money on that invoice so I know I need to track that down and I need to remind them to make that payment um, also with this it also allows me to know what date that final amount was due and if I see that that date has already passed and there's no date over here for final amount paid on this date, then I know they're definitely late in payment and I need to go after them and uh, and see where that money is one way or the other. Um, miles driven, I basically have this for my own purposes for taxes and stuff like that to know um, if a certain number of miles was driven on my car compared to my production van. I want to know how many miles needs to be on that vehicle for that job and with all of this, I can enter a number like 150 here, and it automatically does some accounting for me. It automatically says that any number in this car column is divided by 25. So the number of miles I have to drive on that vehicle is divided by 25. That's the number of gallons I'm gonna go through of gas. The number of miles I drive on my van is divided by 16, which is the amount of gas uh, miles per gallon that my van actually gets. And all of that is uh, multiplied by 2.5, which is about two and a half dollars per gallon. I know that that's my cost for gas, plus um, other job expenses I might have, such as materials, um, labor, anything like that, all included in this other job expenses column for that specific invoice. And over here, we get the total job expenses, including all of that, and then your net profit off of that job. So that's all pretty straightforward so far in the math behind all of this. But what about over here? Now here is where we get into the actual de uh, the departments in your company. For me, I have audio consulting, equipment sales, graphic design, lighting, merchandise, performing, photography, projection, video, and rentals. I have a lot of different uh, divisions and branches of my company. And this will come in, into our next sheet here in just a second. But I want to enter the amount that I actually made in each division. So let's say that job was for a commercial video. So I'm going to put all of that money into over here. So $1,000 is what I charge for that video. And that comes down here into totals. Most of this stuff has a total at the very bottom just for very easy accounting at the end of your quarter and reporting it to the uh, IRS or PA Department of Revenue or whatever uh, Department of Revenue you guys have in your state. Now, why do I enter that number twice? Why is it over here? Well, it's because in the profit and loss statement over here, these are all numbers that are imported from that original sheet. So you're gonna notice this has equals the, all you have to do is basically hit in that uh, income from that branch of quarter one, I hit equals, and then I come over here to quarter sale summary one, and I hit this right here, which brings that total into your profit and loss. And uh, with that kind of idea, you come up with $1,000 for video, and you don't have to do anything. This is automatically brought in from your sales summary. So you enter the number once over here and it's brought into your profit and loss over here. And that way you know, hey, I made $1,000, great. 
Now that's my net profit for the year, and I'll get into this sheet in just a second. Next up is your expenses. So basically here in Pennsylvania, there are a lot of different uh, things that you can enter on your uh, Schedule C at the end of the year. Um, so basically I created accounting for my program to say what every one of those things are. So if I have an expense today, let's say whether it's for a job I'm doing or whether it's for the overall company of I had um, insurance or if I had a repair to my vehicle or if I had a new piece of equipment I had to buy for a certain thing, anything like that, I come into here. Every single day that I have an expense, I come into this program and I'm entering the date of that expense. So 1-1-2019. Where did I get it from? What vendor? So B and H photo video. And I bought gaff tape to do this video commercial for myself, um, whatever it happens to be. So advertising is any kind of uh, materials or uh, anything you had uh, like a website. All of that is included in your advertising. Um, new van expenses. This is basically any expense that I have for my new equipment van. Um, all of that is included here because at the end of the year, uh, if you take actual expenses on your vehicle instead of just mileage, you need to know these are the actual numbers that I had in expenses for that vehicle. Um, you would have a different column for every single vehicle you own if that's how you do your accounting. If it's just per the mileage, then your mileage is already right here and the miles driven on this vehicle for the quarter. Um, you're just gonna add up those four numbers and you'll know that number for yourself. Um, it's pretty straightforward no matter how you do your accounting. Commissions and fees, contract labor, uh, depletion, depreciable new equipment, anything I buy that's over $2,000, I wanna enter, enter it right there. Legal and professional services, office expenses, rentals, um, that I had to rent equipment to do a certain job, repairs and maintenance, anything I had to repair. Um, supplies, that's basically anything I buy, supplies for my own office here, um, other than like office expenses, which supplies would be like paper. Um, office expenses would be like, I had to buy a new hard drive for my computer or whatever. Um, taxes and licenses, that includes your sales tax, that includes your um, tax quarterly payments or estimated quarterly payments, all that kind of stuff's right there. Travel, any kind of hotels or stuff like that I had to pay for, right there. Deductible meals, anything that I had to get a meal for the crew or for myself when I was on the road, all of that's right there for me. At the end of the year, uh, those numbers all really, really matter. Um, let's say I had to purchase uh, a cost of goods for that um, specific job. So I bought gaff tape for that. Um, uh, let's say it's $25. I had to um, get gaff tape for that job. And I'm going to say that invoice because I want to mark that it was a purchase made for that specific invoice, which again is right here. And typically you would see that number over here as well and other job expenses because I want to include that. And that way everything is linked all together so I know that that certain uh, item was for that specific contract. And then cell service, shipping, computer programs, subscriptions, internet service, car expenses, anything additional I had here. It's other expenses on your Schedule C, so it's all stuff that you come up with these columns for. You can obviously add more if you'd like, but I only have five uh, this year so far. So all of that data is already imported. Every single time that I have a new contract or a new expense, I'm entering it into one of these two sheets that you've already seen. All of that data gets brought over into this profit and loss statement. And again, this sheet is not available for download, so please don't ask in the comments below because I can't do that. Um, but all you have to do is down here in your expenses, see it's pretty straightforward. It's a one page sheet, by the way, um, for your profit and loss. So for that gaff tape, I made a purchase. And all I had to do to bring that number over was again, make all my columns over here, but purchases equals, where does that come from? That's quarter one 
in my sheet. That's quarter one right here. And this is quarter two, this is quarter three, this is quarter four, and this is yearly. So this is quarter one. Where did that number come from? Well, it came from this column. So all I have to do is right here, see my, where my mouse is, enter that number, click on it once, hit enter on my computer. Now that number is brought over, and now I know my expense total for all of quarter one was $25. And I know that my income for quarter one was $1,000. So my net profit is $975. But not only that, but I also know percentages. And this is incredibly important for all of your data at the end of the year. Again, right here, all of those numbers are equals this number plus this number plus this number plus this number equals your yearly, right? So all I have to do is hit equals this plus this plus this plus this. And finally, you have your yearly total for that specific department in your company. Now, because all of this is divided by the total down here, of total income. I know it's 100% of my income, but if I had another number up here, it would be less. So let's say there's $500 up here somewhere. Well, now 67% of my income this entire year came from uh, the video department, which is doing pretty well. So I, I know that's pretty good. Um, down here, I know my percentages of, again, the total amount down here for the year. And all of these are simply um, this divided by this. So the total for that specific uh, line for the purchases divided by your total of expenses completely for the year is the percentage that uh, that certain line took up. So I know that my purchases took up 100% of my expenses for the year. Normally on an accounting sheet that's really used for your entire year, you're gonna see advertising maybe about 10%, um, uh, you know, rentals might be a few percent. Uh, you're gonna see probably meals and entertainment at like two or 3%. All of these will be different percentages for you to figure out if you didn't do so hot that year, well, where did your money go to? Like, you know, what's doing well as a, a dif different department of your company, but where did my money go to if a big chunk of it went to purchases? Well, how do I bring how do I bring my purchases down? Um, if a lot of it went to, uh, let's say, travel and meals, how do I do jobs that are closer? That way, I don't have that many expenses there. Um, if a lot of it went to advertising, well, maybe just do less advertising this year. Um, all of that information is incredibly important. And down here, you have your totals for everything. So your total income that quarter, total expenses that quarter, and total net profit that quarter. All of that is figured out. And then this is your yearly numbers. And down here, finally, is the percentage. So I know that 3% of whatever I bring in this year was my cost, my expenses. And 98% of it was my net profit. That's the amount that I took home that year. So. 98% is really, really good. Uh, typically, you'll see anywhere from 60 to uh, 90% there. Typically, we, on average, see about 86 to 87% uh, net profit on every dollar we bring in, which is really good numbers. But um, yeah, so it's typically all of this data right here is incredibly important. The percentage is, is probably the most important part of at least our profit and loss statement every year because that's what tells us what's doing well, how much money we're making off that division. If a certain division of the company isn't doing too hot, if it's losing money, I wanna know that and all of that data is right here for me in my P&L. And basically all I need to do is enter every single invoice and every single uh, expense into this very easy and simple to use program in Excel. This is literally just Microsoft Excel. So it's not that hard of a program to understand. There is a little bit of math behind it. There is like uh, some addition and subtraction and stuff like that, but nothing too, too complex. Um, the, the most complex part is literally just make, bringing these numbers in from your account summaries for every single quarter. And as long as you know where that number is, you'll be absolutely fine. But with all that said, 
This is our accounting program, and I'm sure there are plenty of ways you can improve it on your own for your small business, but this is literally free. Once we bought the program, Microsoft Word and Excel, which Excel is how we do all of our accounting, including our invoices, all of our contracts, everything like that. So it was definitely worthwhile buying for our computer here in the office, but it's easy and simple and straightforward to use. And once I bought it, it's mine. It's not a program I have to subscribe to every single year for $50 a month, which is ridiculous for a price. Um, with FreshBooks and things like that, I know that you know you can get smaller packages, but when you're a company of our size who has more than 50 clients throughout the year, you know, yeah, we, we kind of need to do things on our own with before we're gonna go paying $50 a month for 500 clients. I don't wanna be limited. And so this allows us to have basic free accounting for the entire year. Now, some accountants out there might have things to add to this, and I certainly welcome you to comment those below of things that you might uh, want to include for a different kind of company or a, uh, a little bit larger company than mine. This is all information that I personally need to see at the end of the day to know how well we're doing as a company and allowing us to know, well, here's how much we made and here's how much we expense that quarter. So I can very easily do my quarterly statements, my estimated earnings, all that kind of stuff is right here for me. I don't need to go searching for it all over the place. It's all here. Now you can do a second one completely over here on the second sheet for like taxable sales and non-taxable sales, that's up to you. I just prefer to have all my numbers here. And the quarter comes, I know, that I need to look at these numbers right here to report my uh, numbers for sales tax. So all of that is right here for you. Please feel free to screenshot anything here and uh, copy the design into your accounting program into Excel or whatever. It's all pretty straightforward. Um, I'm again not going to have this as a download just because I don't really want to upload a file like that online for download um, because I am afraid of our actual numbers getting out there um, quite a bit. So I don't like that and I don't like people uh, potentially being able to hack this file and seeing all of our actual customer information. That would be really bad for us because um, there's a lot of numbers in there. So uh, I appreciate you watching and if you want to see our episode on how to write a contract and how to do invoicing and stuff like that, that's all going to be included in another episode. Please do leave a like on this episode if you want to see that in the future. Thank you so much for watching and please do hit that subscribe button for plenty more great content to come in the future on this channel. And I would welcome you guys to become a customer today and uh, go over to madhouseandproductions.com and get yourself one of our books, one of our many, many books on uh, music, on video, photo, on uh, the whole music world, and all of that great stuff and business-related uh, advice over there at madhouseandproductions.com forward slash merchandise for our actual merchandise. Or you can go over there and get some consulting services for your small business. Thank you so much, and have a great day.